Now, the BBC has accused the Russian government of waging an information war against the West, with RT leading the battle. RT's Murad Gadzdiev looks at whether the British broadcaster has itself retained objectivity at all times. The BBC has long prided itself on its impartiality, but perhaps those days are gone. Case in point, a little article that's appeared on the BBC's website about RT and having sat down to read it, wow, a scary little title to get you all nice and tense right off the bat. It tells you that I'm actually a Kremlin minion bent on stealing your trust. RT's funding, also a favorite topic in Western media. Russia significantly increased its spending on RT. The channel's budget rose 75 percent. If you came away thinking RT has more and more money to throw about, you've just fallen for the BBC's line. It's in dollars which make up most of our spending. RT's budget has, in real terms, fallen by almost a quarter because the ruble has weakened significantly. So, no, the budget's not bigger. It's dropped. The article's writer then does his best to belittle RT's online success, which has left the BBC in the dust. He says, our videos on YouTube, for example, aren't political or newsy enough, unlike the BBC's. But when it comes to the ice bucket challenge, President Obama seems cold on the idea. Good job. Alternatively, take a glimpse at BBC News' sixth most popular video, a spider crawling around a camera lens. Of its top 100 videos, none of them refer to the crisis in Ukraine. Fact-checking standards at the BBC have also seemingly been relaxed. Here it is, a video of Ukrainian rioters beating police, right in our top 100. Oh, and... In the 1980s, I was opposing arms sales to Iraq. You've probably seen the face, Jeremy Corbyn, on RT, now the leader of the UK's Labour Party. For all of its declared fairness, the BBC is under public attack for doing a hatchet job on him. A lover of unfashionable causes. Is uh, that the jumper that your mum made? Yes, it is. That report spawned an outcry, with the BBC being called out for an abashed bias. People even complained to the media regulator, Ofcom. Well, the BBC has always said it's been neutral, and because it's a public broadcaster, um, because it gets money from uh, the population, it has to be objective and be fair and balanced. But over the last uh, decade or so, it's been accused of being biased and putting out views which they find acceptable. But what's with the newfound interest in RT? I think one of the reasons is that they see RT as a competitor. The point of view of the BBC, the point of view of uh, Sky, they want to dominate the airwaves. And one way of doing it is to accuse RT of bias and try and convince people that a biased program is not worth watching. Here's to the old, impartial BBC. Morad Gazdiev, RT. Well, the BBC's been accused of violating the rules on impartiality on more than a dozen occasions in the last four years. In one of the most recent cases, the broadcaster faced claims of bias in its coverage of the Scottish independence referendum. A row broke out after the BBC broadcast a story claiming the then Scottish First Minister ignored a question from its correspondent. Why should a Scottish voter believe you, a politician, against men who are responsible for billions of pounds of profits? He didn't answer. Well, this is what was actually caught on camera. I correct you on a factual point, uh, uh, Nick. The uh, corporation tax does not depend on registered office. Well, edited from the BBC report were Salmon's wordy response, as well as a heated exchange with the correspondent. The First Minister was actually repeatedly challenged with further questions, preventing him from moving on to other journalists. Well, Scotland's former First Minister is the latest guest on RT's Going Underground to discuss, among other things, the media coverage of last autumn's referendum. This was a blind spot for me. You see, I'd fought election after election, and in recent times pretty successfully, and although papers had been you know, totally biased, you know, fair enough, newspapers are able to be biased if they wish, but broadcasters have been pretty impartial. And I'd fought election campaign after election campaign where the only complaint I had with broadcasting was not being on enough, <laughs> which is different from bias. 
Uh, and therefore, I was blindsided in the referendum campaign that the BBC, particularly towards the end of the, of the campaign, were, were such a, a mouthpiece of uh, Tory government propaganda. Yeah.